Hi, and welcome to Terry Talks Movies of Science Fiction Saturday. So, I've kind of changed Science Fiction Saturday a bit because I am mercurial and capricious. And instead of doing a standard Science Fiction Saturday, what I'm doing is a whole bunch of genre movie box sets that aren't the new box sets coming out right at the moment, but there are things you might find secondhand if you look around and things that you might want to get. So, let's get started. We'll start out with one that you're not going to find for reasons it's called science fiction collection and it has four movies in it and it's much bigger than it needs to be have a look at the size of that that is an enormous box set which i picked up in a shop called hard off in tokyo and it had some things in it that were a little harder to find so i got it original price was 9800 yen which is about a hundred dollars australian and Blu-rays and DVDs in Japan are crazy expensive for reasons known only to Japanese economics. But in this one, we've got some interesting things. I'll just take off the little sash they've got holding it together there. The Postman with Kevin Costner. It's got that in it. And again, they're like full-size DVDs in it. The next one we've got is Sphere. With Dustin Hoffman and Sharon Stone and Samuel L. Jackson in it. Which again is a bit of a deep cut. And then we've got... Mars Attacks, a Japanese copy of the Mars Attacks, which is kind of fun. I've actually played this one. It plays okay on my multi-region player, but the next one's random as hell, and it surprised me when I saw it in the in the box set. These are the only DVDs I bought in Japan. The Avengers movie with Uma Thurman and Ray Fiennes in it from back at the turn of the century. So you've got all of these in a great big box set. My friends warned me before I went to Japan in 2019 that I wouldn't find too much media there, and they were right. Found a lot of wonderful things, but movies were not some of them. Movie memorabilia, I got a few pieces, but um, that one is a somewhat unusual box set, which you may find difficult to find. I think I paid about $30 for it in Australia, and it was second-hand. Hard off is a chain of stores in Japan. They've got literally hundreds of stores, which does second-hand books and second-hand music and second-hand computer gear and consoles and cartridge games and all sorts of things but i just happened to find that one in shinjuku and i thought that's a bit random but i will go for it and of course i don't need to put the subtitles on because all of those movies were made in english let's go with another one which i found a long time ago and one of these movies i'm actually going to be doing a deeper dive into in the not too distant future when i get a very unusual box set in and these things were very popular about 20 years ago they were all over the place they were in um two dollar shops and things like that you know those cheap um dollar tree and places like that for the americans and it's called killer creatures all on different discs so they haven't crammed or they have crammed them a bit into the discs but we've got lady frankenstein the giant healer monster the wasp woman which is all over the place attack of the giant leeches is in there as well werewolf in the girl's dormitory the brain that wouldn't die and it says many more and the many more are a thing called Tormented, Beast from the Haunted Cave, and A Bucket of Blood, and another one called Blood Creatures. So you get 10 movies in these things, and they were dirt cheap. It might have been even just $10 for 10 movies. Uh, you can find a lot of these on YouTube these days, but I kind of like slipping a disc into the machine and watching things that way. Uh, the quality of them is fairly good. It's not pristine edition prints, but they're watchable, and they're a bit of fun to have in your collection. And these do turn up occasionally in second-hand stores and thrift stores. So these kind of things are a lot of fun to enjoy. And to just kind of sit back, just keep chucking discs in the machine and enjoy them that way. But it's nice to have one or two of those kind of things in your collection. These ones I like. I think this is an American one. Sci-fi classic. Roger Corman's cult classics triple feature. Attack of the Crab Monsters is in there. War of the Satellites and Not of This Earth. All 1950s, low budget. Roger Corman science fiction movies. And they're great fun to watch and rewatch, and the production values are crazy low. And people like Dick Miller turn up in them as well, Paul Birch, a whole bunch of other um, actors who are known in the Corman oeuvre. And yeah, uh, anytime I want to watch a Roger Corman movie, I can just kind of reach up on the shelf and grab something like that. I've got a couple of other very similar box sets of Roger Corman and people like William Castle. There are a whole bunch of these. But they're worth picking up if you're that way inclined. And I don't mean gay. I mean, if you like these old uh, science fiction movies, which many of you do. 
Then there's this one. I know this was put out in very, very similar, if not exactly the same, box sets across the world. Universal Monsters, the essential collection. You've got Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, Bride of Frankenstein, The Wolfman, Phantom of the Opera, and Creature from the Black Lagoon for a 1950s outlier. I've got several different versions of most of these movies, but this box set's kind of cool, and it's got that really crazy format where everything's folded together. The discs are all kind of like that inside, and I'm going to be crazily clumsy with this. Inside that kind of a thing. So you've got it all folded together there. It also came with a bunch of lobby cards, which I haven't even unsealed, which is unusual for me. So I've got those in there, and you've got a what looks like a 48 page booklet with all the details of these monsters now these are, are great to have because there are times when you're gonna want to just dip back into the universal horror you can even use them for reference as well because there's a lot written about these movies and occasionally you want to kind of error check what you say about them and what other people say about them as well but yeah it's a bit chunky but it's all on blu-ray it says violence and low level course language I'm not sure where the course language is in these, but that rating does seem to be a little bit inaccurate. But this one's got to be in your collection because there are a whole ton of extras in it. I can't go through them all. And they've got things like documentaries about Lon Chaney Jr. in there, a whole bunch of uh, memories of Jack Pierce. It's a really complete and replete collection that should be in your collection. And if it isn't, you can pick them up not too expensively if you look around particularly secondhand. I don't know what they're like on, on the big stores like Amazon and other places like that, but I know that there are a bunch of them on eBay because some people are divesting themselves of their physical media. These need to be in your collection if they aren't already. Let me know if you've already got them. Now, in more serious note, in more serious kinds of films, this one I've picked up not too expensively. I think it may well be a this box set that's had several different editions in different countries. This is Region 4, so it's Australian. John Cassavetti is the collection. Now, this one you need to have. If you're a serious movie buff, uh, it's got Faces, it's got Opening Night, it's got A Woman Under the Influence with Gina Rollins. It's got Shadows, which is great too. Two different versions, including a director's cut of The Killing of a Chinese Bookie and a 147-minute documentary about John Cassavetti as a movie director called A Constant Forge. This is an essential collection for serious movie buffs. And if you haven't seen Cassavetti's movies, movies like Shadows and Faces are fantastic. Low budget, they tend to have high contrast, black and white photography in them. And um, they are something special. There are just so many movies that were influenced by these films, particularly Shadows and Faces. They're not genre at all, but they are fantastically well done and well worth checking out when i'm in the mood for something serious i want something like this i've been watching shit for a long time i want something with a little more depth to it and a little more art to it i sometimes dip into the john cassavetti stuff because he is a director whose work you really need to check out if you don't know who he is he's the guy that exploded at the end of bride de palmas the fury the guy that played the bad secret agent guy that's cassavetti's and his work is worth treasuring and enjoying repeatedly. I also like musicals, surprisingly enough. And I picked up this Chunky uh, from Warner Brothers that released it. I think it's an American one. Four films in one collection, all on Blu-ray. Musicals, it's got The Bandwagon, it's got Calamity Jane, which is the most lesbian movie of mainstream Hollywood put out in the 1950s. It's got two guys who dress up in drag, it's got two women who set up house together, and then... Doris Day sings about a secret love. Calamity Jane is so rainbow, it's ridiculous. It's also got Kiss Me Kate, which I love, and Singing in the Rain, which I'm not as much in love with as many other people are, but I think it's still a good film. And having and it's not too thick either, so it's shelf-friendly, this one. And yeah, um, occasionally I'll, I like to dip into Hollywood musicals. There's just so many of them that I really appreciate. Things like There's Always Fair Weather, which Gene Kelly directed with Stanley Donner. It's just a lovely box set if you're in the mood for that kind of thing. And, and I'm not, not just in the mood for one genre all the time. I like to vary things up a bit. Doing what I do here, uh, keeping that kind of mental flexibility on the kinds of movies I watch is quite important to me. And 
Occasionally, musicals are a part of that. They've got three more for you, or actually four more, some of which is genre, so hang around. This one is one you should have, particularly if you're interested in World War II. It's called the Warner Brothers and the Home Front Collection, a three classic or star World War II musicals. It's got Irving Berlin's This Is The Army. Thank you, lucky stars, which Warner Brothers did. If you ever wanted to see John Garfield singing Blues in the Night, if you ever wanted to see Humphrey Bogart being called out by Cuddle Seagal, uh, it's really great. It's um, Even though it's got Eddie Cantor in it, and Eddie Cantor's style of humour hasn't aged particularly well, it's great. And then you've got Hollywood Canteen, which is based on the real Hollywood Canteen, where Hollywood movie stars would entertain troops who were leaving for the Pacific in a big venue where they gave them meals, gave them um, coffee, and most of the people serving there were Hollywood movie stars, and people working back of house were Hollywood movie stars. A lot of film stars gave to the war effort by the Hollywood canteen, and this shows a bit of that. Fictionalised, but still, it's an interesting piece of film history, and there's more details of it on the back. I like having this kind of historical stuff which shows how times have changed, but also shows how people perceived the war and perceived beating fascism and, and Nazis and Imperial Japan at the time. So, yeah, that one's worth having. That's another American one I've got, so you should be able to find that if you look around secondhand. Now, this one's been re-released as something called the Atomic Monsters Collection or something, but this is the original... Uh, DVD version of it. Icons of Horror Collection, Sam Katzman, four classic films on DVD. And I definitely know that this has been put out more recently, but it's got four films along. It's got The Giant Claw, and who doesn't love that? The Giant Claw with that plucked chicken monster is just a sweet spot for campy 1950s giant monster movies. It's got The Creature with the Atomic Brain, The Werewolf, and the movie that first scared me in horror movies when I saw it late at night at my grandparents' place. The Zombies of Moratau, which has got slow zombies, but they're very, very creepy. And I love this collection, mostly because it does have the Zombies of Moratau in it, which was the, the first horror movie that ever scared me. And yes, it's not as good as the more recent Atomic Creatures or Atomic Monsters collection. And they're, they're kind of skinny. They're based, um, each one's got its own disc, but they're in a skinny case each. And that one, in either of the editions, is something you should have in your collection. Because those Sam Katzman, I think it was Columbia Pictures collection, um, really are worth doing. There are some extra features on there. Sinister Savages, Chapter 2 of Sam's 1951 version of Mysterious Island. A Mr. Magoo cartoon called Magoo Faces, Terror Faces Magoo. An ultra rare comedy short, Midnight Blunders. Original trailers for all four features and bonus trailers for other science fiction classics. You should have that in your collection, whether it's in this version or the version I'm going to put a picture of up on the screen right now. Two more for you. This one's an American one, but it's a bit weird because it's got a few different movie studios output in it. And all of them are in the original um, ratio. Some of them are in Academy ratio. Some of them are in 1.85 to 1 and things like that. It's called Full Movie Collection Classic Horror. It's got five, the early 1950s, atomic post-war um, kind of yeah, survivors gathering together and trying to make a go of it movie, which was re-released as one of the very early imprint films from Viavision. It's got The Mad Magician with Vincent Price, so you got that. The Man Who Turned to Stone with Victor Jory and Doran and William Hudson. And strangely, an English film, The Terror of the Tongs, with Christopher Lee, Yvonne Monlauer, and Jeffrey Toon. So it's a weird and very random selection. But these are worth checking out as well. Two movies per disc. There are absolutely no extras on it. But it's kind of fun to have these movies. And I know it's really hard to find five on the imprint edition at the moment. And it can get quite expensive because people are putting a premium on reselling imprint films. So if you can't get the imprint one, you might as well get this one. And it's totally worth your time and your money. And you should be able to find it without too much difficulty. The last one's a Blu-ray collection. This one has 15 hours of bonus features, which is great. I'm not getting all of the films created by this director, but I think this is a nice tasting plate. 
It's on Blu-ray. They've all been digitally restored from high-resolution film elements. Five classic movies from the Master of Suspense. The Alfred Hitchcock Collection. This has got Rear Window. It's got Vertigo. It's got Psycho. It's got North by Northwest. And it has The Birds as well. This is a kind of definitive mid-career Alfred Hitchcock Collection on Blu-ray. There you've got your James Stewart on that side. You've got Cary Grant and Eva Marie Saint on the other. It all kind of folds out and all of the movies are there and apparently there are there are tons of bonus features on all of them i haven't gone through all of this yet getting some hitchcock into your collection is is a solid deal um i like what this has got in it i like the fact that it's got 15 hours of extras which is more than the runtime of all the movies probably but you definitely got to have something like this in there i like early hitchcock as well i like things like sabotage and saboteur I like The Secret Agent from the 30s. I, I'm not that big on his silent films, but I like all of his stuff from the 30s through to the 70s when he stopped making movies. These ones are your kind of definitive mid-career Alfred Hitchcock selection. And you should have them in your collection at all if you are collecting films. Particularly things like Vertigo. I'm very impressed with Vertigo. I like the obsessiveness of Scotty, the James Stewart character. I like Rear Window. It's got Thelma Ritter in it. Who wouldn't love that? North by Northwest, I think, is one of the seminal road movie action films where somebody's traveling from A to B. It's something that Hitchcock had done before in, in movies like Saboteur. Of course, you've got Psycho and the Birds, which are two horror films that are rightly classics. First time I saw Psycho was in a cinema and I literally didn't have a shower for two days. It affected me that much. It doesn't affect people now that we're a bit desensitized to that stuff. But still, that one should definitely be in your collection. And there's no real reason for you not to have it. So that's what I've got for you this time. Now, uh, I was planning something else, but I didn't get enough time to complete it. And I will be doing more science fiction next Saturday. And I've got two videos between now and then. One of which is some really groovy stuff that was given to me by Viavision Imprint, uh, including three of this month's imprint releases, which are in a very nice genre sweet spot for us all. So that's it for this time around. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the notification bell so you can know when the next video comes up. If you haven't subscribed already, give it a go. It doesn't cost you anything and it does you no harm at all. And it may well get you something to watch when you're on a train and want to annoy the people on the train with you or when you're at home and just want to kick back. You can also support the channel by donating at patreon.com slash terrytalksmovies. Yeah, I kind of want to watch all of those movies again, all of those box sets again. But then I wouldn't get to make any videos. So anyway, until next time, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Drag out and dust off one of your box sets and just have a bit of a binge this weekend. And I'll catch you next time.